What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Cole. I'm here today to talk about the 6D Mark II, just to give my two cents on the situation that's been going on. So I read everybody's comments, watch a lot of video. Um, I pay attention to a lot of different things, but it seems that Canon has managed to piss off the congregation again. I cannot believe what they do. So let's jump right into it, shall we? The 6D Mark II, 26 megapixel camera, no dual car slot, UHS-1, Bluetooth, GPS, Wi-Fi, NFC, um, articulating screen, touch screen, what else? Digic 7. Um, it is a disappointment. All right, it is, I'm gonna just call it what it is. It's a disappointment. It is the Canon 80D full frame. That's exactly what it is. Call it what it is. Right now, I have the 5D Mark IV, which is right here, and I'm actually recording you with my 80D. As you guys already know, I shoot the 80D a lot. I shoot my 5D Mark IV a lot. Um, so let's jump into a few things. Here we go. So the 6D Mark II, about 98% viewfinder. All right, 98%. Um, it has a UHS-1 card slot. First disappointment, why would you put a UHS-1 card slot in the brand new camera? The camera's being released in 2017. Can we get UHS-2, UHS-3, something like that? Why UHS-1? That's, that, that right there is the first problem. Um, no 4K. We're going to come back to no 4K, all right? I'm going to tell you guys the reason why they put 4K, and I'm sure you probably already know. 45 cross-type um, focus points. The 80D has 45 cross type focus points. No difference there. It actually has less dynamic range than the 80D. Can you believe that? It has less. Um, it's $2,000. We're gonna come back to that. It's about 6.5 um, frames per second. Why? 6.5, why? So, all right, so here we go. So let's talk about the first thing, 4K. I'm a, I'm a, we're going we to get rid of this first of all. It has no 4K. Now, this is 2017. We're halfway done with 2017, about to go into 2018. Technology has came a long way, all right? Technology is continuing, continuously evolving, all right? Almost everything that we have right now, even our cell phones shoot 4K. There are actually TVs right now that are being invented that have 6k so why didn't canon put 4k into the 6d mark ii very easy because of this camera right here the 5d mark IV. the 5d mark IV is a 30 megapixel camera and it has 4k although i use an mjpeg and a horrible codec um it has 4k none of canon's cameras really shoot 4k but this one if you was to put 4k in the 6d mark ii there would be no cause for this camera ever again. Nobody would buy it. There would be no reason to buy it. Why would you buy this camera over the 6D Mark II if I have 4K? 30 megapixels? The 6D Mark II has a 26 megapixel sensor. They're both full frame. There wouldn't be no reason for it. The only people that will buy that camera that, that will buy the 6D Mark IV are people who don't know any better. And they just hear 4K, oh my God. They don't know much about MJPEG. They don't know about codecs. They don't know anything about the crop um, the crop factor when we're shooting video um, so they wouldn't know any better all right my 80d 5d mark 4 and the 6d mark 2 all have the dual pixel autofocus which is probably going to be primarily the biggest thing in all their cameras from from here on out um, but no 4k it would completely stop almost obliterate all of the, the 5d mark 4 sales if you have the 6D Mark II out and the 5D Mark IV sell it at the same time, especially when I bought this, I would have never bought this. I would have never bought the 6D, uh, I would never bought the 5D Mark IV because I could get the 6D Mark II. So I wouldn't have paid the $3,200, $3,300 price tag on this rather than buy the 6D, for, 6D Mark II for $2,000. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, so that's the reason really why they didn't put 4K in it. Now, 
they gave you 4K for a time lapse. Why? Absolutely why? We don't care about that. They want, we want 4K. But that's the reason why we didn't get 4K. Um, let's talk about the $2,000 price tag. Is it worth it? No, it's absolutely not worth it. At most, it's probably about $1,300 for that camera. I can't, I, could, I can't see myself purchasing the 6D Mark II when I already have the 80D. Because it's, it's the same exact camera, actually. Now, here's another thing. They talk, you guys talk about the processor. Let's hit on that, too. The 80D has a Digic 6. The 6D Mark II has a Digic 7. In photography, will you be able to tell the difference? Now, depending on what type of photography for you do, you might be able to. If you are shooting at high continuous frames a second, if you're shooting in continuous mode, if you're shooting in high speed mode all the time, da -da 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 -da. and you and that's pretty much all you do, you probably will be able to tell the difference between a Digic 6 and a Digic 7 as far as performance goes. The ADD is a very, very, very good performing camera. It is it's probably one of the best, and it's super fast. Me personally, and a lot of photographers, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a Digic 6 and Digic 7, so stop fooling yourself. Thinking that there is a big, big difference in the... It, it's not. It's, it's not. Um, and then the only way for you to really see that is to actually go out and shoot. But you don't shoot like that on a day-to-day -day basis. So, let's get rid of that. Um, low light, high ISO. Absolutely. The, the 6D Mark II has a bigger sensor. Bigger sensor equals... Better low light. Better low light equals higher higher ISOs. We know that. I don't buy a camera for for higher ISOs. I don't buy a camera really to shoot in low light. All my cam your 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 modern DSLRs DSLRs all do really good in low light. They all do. When you're up at about 3,200, 6,400 ISO you're still going to get a really good performance without the grainy look of your video. That's only when you, nobody really shoots in the higher 13,000s, 14,000s. You don't do, you don't do that. You guys have to start thinking logical. Yes, it's going to perform better in low light, but normally you're only running about 32, 6,400 in ISO. The rest is accommodated by the lens that you use. So if you use a wide open lens at nighttime, say a 1.4, even a 1.2, you're going to let in a lot of light. So in that instance, you're only going up to about mm, 32, 64, maybe 12, 8, 12,800 to let in a lot of light. And then, then you probably won't even be that high. So quit saying, oh, better in low light. No, listen, this is where we keep it real. All right. I, I can go out and shoot low light and probably won't even need to get up to $12,800, 12,800, even with my ADD. So, we're going to squash that right there. Um, now, here's a really, really big problem for me, Canon. Really, really big problem. The 6D Mark IV is only a higher shutter speed. It's one four thousandth of a second. My God, I'm going to pull out my hair. Why one four thousandth of a second? That right there canceled this whole, canceled this camera for me. Because for the type of photography that we do, I am pretty much always battling the sun. Always battling the sun. One four thousandth of a second will not allow me to underexpose my model enough so I can use my strobes and basically overpower the sun. It won't, you can't do it. The only thing that you could do in that situation is throw on about a two stop, three stop ND filter. Um, which you're probably going to screw them on to make it about a five or even a, yeah you got a you got a three two three and four stop ND filter in that situation. So if you're using the 6D Mark II and you're using strobes and you're going out shooting on like on location like a lot of us do, one four thousandth of a second is horrible. You're going to have a you're going to have to find a way to make that up because without being able to boost your shutter speed any faster it's game over that that completely did it for me right there i have to be able to get up to about one eight thousandth of a second because i love high speed sync high speed sync is the best thing ever 
and I have to be able to shoot my fast shutter speed and still be able to use my flash when I want to to overpower the sun. And I'm not about to invest in a bunch of ND filters like that to possibly degrade, which I don't think it does, I've already tried it, degrade the picture in order to put two and three ND filters on there because the 6D Mark II won't go over one four thousandth of a second. Got it? No. So, frames per second, 6.5 frames per second. The 6D Mark IV, I'm sorry, ah, the 5D Mark IV does seven. My ADD that I'm shooting you on right now does six. The 6D Mark II is 6.5. So it's right in between the 5D Mark IV and the ADD. Why, I have no idea. Now, if they wasn't going to give us 4K, we could have shot full HD 1080p in 60 frames per second. They could have gave us 120 frames per second to make up for it. People wouldn't have been as angry as they are. I would I would have been fine with 124 frames per second. Um, typically because you've already put the articulating screen on the 6D Mark II. You've already made it touch screen. So it is a video, it is a videographer's dream to be able to do that, but instead of the ADD, now you can do it in full frame with dual pixel autofocus and being able to do 120 frames per second with all those with the full frame camera would have been phenomenal it would have been great you wouldn't have pissed off the masses as much it would have been actually pretty good but you didn't you messed that up also it is so bad how they come out with something and they change one or two things and then they keep going i've always compared canon to apple to apple let me tell you why Apple does, they, Apple and Canon have the same type of mindset. I don't have Apple, I have Samsung, and for good reason. Apple, if, you, if we go back a little bit, Apple came out with that iPhone 4, iPhone 5, iPhone 6, now they have iPhone 7. When they came out with the iPhone 4, they came out with three iPhone 4s. When they came out with the iPhone 5, they came out with three iPhone 5s. Why? They came out with the iPhone 4, iPhone C, iPhone 4S, iPhone C. Then they came out with the iPhone 5, iPhone 5S, iPhone, iPhone 5C. For what? In each of those cameras, can you actually tell me a difference? They gave you a little bit more performance, just a little bit. They gave you a little bit more megapixel. Probably changed just a tad thing and called it a new phone. From the iPhone 4 to the iPhone 5, they came out with a couple of colors. Came out with just a tad bit more performance, a little megapixel, called the iPhone 5. It wasn't actually till the iPhone 6 until they actually changed it and woke up and said, hey, we probably need to do something because we're getting killed. We probably need to make a bigger phone and all this other stuff to keep up with Samsung, all right? Canon has the same type of mindset, the actual same type of mindset. They come out with a little bit, they give you a little bit, a little bit of better processor, like the 6D Mark II, a little bit better megapixel, give you a little bit and call it something else. That is exactly what they do, just a little bit. They keep their quality, Apple has app their, their products, unfortunately, because they're all pretty much the same, but the quality of them is amazing. You get less freezing than the Samsung and a lot of different things. Apple and Samsung is just like Canon and Sony. Just the same exact way. Canon gives you quality. Their products are great. I've never had overheating issues. I've never had banding issues. I've never had a lot of different battery life issues. Come, what? Never had that. But they don't innovate. Then you go to Sony. They give you all the features. I autofocus. P pix uh, pixelating. Um, zebras. Um, all this great stuff electronic viewfinder i mean it is amazing but then you got overheating issues banding issues battery issues all kind of issues see what i'm you see where i'm going with this so i am not really happy with the 6d mark ii i think it is a very bad camera all right so let's talk about who this camera is for who's gonna buy this camera here it goes all right if you have the 6D, 
normal version or first version, which is their entry level DS uh, full frame. Entry level full frame. They call this a but they call the 6D Mark II a budget full frame. It's ridiculous. So if you have the 6D, maybe the 5D Mark II, 7070, or any of those series, um, you probably want to look into upgrading. Because if the 6D Mark II is heels over the other 6D and some of those other cameras that I mentioned, absolutely, you want to see a beautiful upgrade. But what about people who want something else, or just wanted something different? If you have the 5D Mark IV, 5D Mark III, if you have the 80D, should you get the 6D Mark II? No, it's not. For, it's it's not for you. That's not pretty much who they're targeting. That's not the 6D series. So it's 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 a it's a bad thing all the way around. All right, it's just bad. I really think Canon is going to see a mass exodus. Uh, with people leaving Canon and going to other um, brands like Sony and Fuji and Panasonic and Pentax and all these other people who are trying to do things to keep in the competition, to keep their head above the game, um, trying to innovate. I think that's where a lot of people are going to start going. All right, I might even start going that way. I'm gonna tell you the honest truth. Um, I love I love Canon. I know the Canon menu. The Canon menu is phenomenal. Um, I have the Sony A6000 right here. I play with this thing and the, 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 the menu is just confusing as hell. It really, really is um, compared to Canon. But it's a really good camera. Still 24 megapixels um, like my ADD. But the electronic viewfinder is just amazing. Um, for the type of photography that I do when I'm exposing for my ambient and doing a lot of other different things um, But the 6D Mark II is just not where it is and a lot of people are really upset about that 6D Mark II The only people who are really not upset about it is the people who are not Who, who doesn't have a full frame who's looking to get into the full frame gang with Canon Okay, not full frame because there are a lot of people who make full frames, but if you like Canon if you are familiar with their menu system, if you're familiar with the buttons and you want to stay Canon and you want to get into the full frame camera, the 6D Mark II is a perfect camera for you. If you have the old 6D, the 6D Mark II is a perfect camera for you if you want to stay Canon. Um, but I, I really think a lot of people are going to be leaving. Now, on to the next issue. Inno innovation. It's really hard. Some, some professionals will tell you it's really hard to innovate with DSLRs because there's a lot of things that you can do in a mirrorless camera, mirrorless system that you cannot do in a DSLR. All right, So you guys got to understand that when you're talking about innovation. Um, now, with that being said, there's a lot of things that Canon could give us that they're not giving us. They could have gave you 120 frames per second. Um, they could have gave you 60, sec uh, 60 frames per second. They could have gave us a lot of different things. They could have put the dual slots in there. They could have they could have put CFast in there. They could have put UHS-3. They could have did a lot of different things, um, but they didn't. And so they can still innovate. They can still come out with an awesome DSLR. It's already lighter, but there's a lot of other different things they could have done, um, but they just didn't. Um, so what is going to keep Canon in this game? What is going to keep them competitive before they are pretty much wiped out? Now, they do have, Canon has a really big following, all right? They do. They have a really big following. There's a lot of, you know, Canon fanboys and fangirls, and there's a lot of, you know, uh, faithful people to Canon, all right? But I believe the only thing that's going to keep Canon competitive is until they jump into the mirrorless system, all right? They're going to have to come out with a mirrorless camera that is going to be phenomenal and blow everybody away. That is the only way Canon is going to stay. Um, There's the only way they're going to stay in this game. Because that's where everybody is going. And for them to come out with the 6D Mark II and the things that is missing, they're going, they're going down the wrong path. 
So that that's pretty much what is going to that's what is going to come to. Otherwise, um, I've already seen a mass exodus with people saying that they're leaving Canon. So um, what's it what's it going to take, Canon? I mean, I really think they're going to need to launch now faster than ever coming into this mirrorless game. Otherwise, um, they're just going to get ran up. They're not going to be they're not going to be known anymore. I mean, they're well. Let me let me rephrase that. Canon is still going to have their name. The people are still going to know who they are. Their work is still going to be high quality work. But without jumping into the mirrorless game and seeing where we're going at as a technology, it's going to be hands. It's going to be game over for Canon. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments, please. Let's comment. Let's talk about this. Do you think Canon is going to be in the? Um, or you think they're still going to be in the game here in the next year or two? Do you think that the 6D Mark II is going to live up to anything that it's been put out to be? All right. What about you? If you have the 80D, do you think that it's worth an upgrade? All right. 5D Mark III, Mark II. Um, do you think it's working? Do you think it's worth the upgrade? All right. Let me know what you think. Um, I I just don't. Oh, not to mention, it doesn't even have a headphone jack. I don't, a lot of people won't headphones yet, especially videographers. The funny thing is, you gave the 6D Mark II an articulated screen. You gave it touch screen. You gave it everything that a videographer or, or a vlogger needs to do vlogs. But one of the biggest things that they want to do, especially if you're doing cinematography, is to put their headphones on to make sure that they're getting quality sound. So why would you give it some things that a videographer needs but not give it the rest no dual car slot no headphone jack but you gave it an articulating screen touch screen that that's like giving me peanut butter no jelly kool-aid no sugar i said sugar that's right yeah <laughs> i know everybody's gonna be like sugar <laughs> that's whatever um until next time we're gonna keep releasing these videos we're gonna talk about this let me know what you guys think in the comments. Comment, like, and subscribe. I'm going to keep bringing you video vlogs. I'm going to keep bringing you photo shoots. We're going to do this thing. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to tackle it all. All right? So, until next time, I holla.